Sita Ram Goal, the 16th of October 1921 to the 3rd of December 2003, was an Indian religious and political activist, writer, and publisher in the late 20th century. He had Marxist leanings during the 1940s, but later became an outspoken anti-communist and also wrote extensively on the damage to Indian culture and heritage wrought by expansionist Islam and missionary activities of Christianity. In his later career he emerged as a commentator on Indian politics, and adhered to Hindu nationalism. Life Early life Sita Ram Goel was born to a Hindu family in Punjab, in 1921, though his childhood was spent in Calcutta. The family looked upon Sri Garibdas, a Nirguna saint comparable to Kabir and Nanak, as its patron saint and his verses, Granth Sahib, were often recited at their home. Goel graduated in history from the University of Delhi in 1944. As a student, he was a social activist and worked for a Harijan ashram in his village. His sympathies for the Arya Samaj, the Harijans and the Indian Freedom Movement, along with his strong support for Mahatma Gandhi, brought him into conflict with many people in his village. Goal also learned to speak and write Sanskrit during these college days. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Direct Action Day. On 16 August 1946, during the Direct Action Day riots in Calcutta that were instigated by the Muslim League shortly before partition of India, Goal, his wife and their eldest son narrowly escaped with their lives. In his autobiography, How I Became a Hindu, Goal writes that he would have been killed by a Muslim mob, but his fluent Urdu and his Western dress saved him. He further relates, that the next evening they had to vacate that house and scale a wall at the back to escape murderous Muslim mobs advancing with firearms." He subsequently wrote and circulated a lengthy article on the riots, titled, The Devil Dance in Calcutta, in which he held Hindus and Muslims equally responsible for the tragedy. His friend Ramswarup, however, criticized him for equating Muslim violence with Hindu violence, claiming that Muslim violence was aggressive and committed in the furtherance of a very reactionary and retrograde cause, namely the vivisection of India. <laughs> Communism to anti-communism In mid-1940s Goal met members of the CSP Congress Socialist Party, translated writings by Narendra Deva and Jayaprakash Narayan into English, and was offered a position as an editor of a CSP publication. But his first editorial for the weekly was deemed to be pro-communist, and he had to stop writing for the weekly. Sita Ram Goal had developed a strong Marxist leaning during his student days and was on the verge of joining the Communist Party of India in 1948. The Communist Party, however, was banned in Bengal on the day he planned to officially become its member. He read Karl Marx's Communist Manifesto and Das Kapital, Harold Lasky's Communism, and came to the conclusion that while Marx stood for a harmonized social system, Sri Aurobindo held the key to a harmonized human personality. Later, books by Aldous Huxley, Viktor Kravchenko, and Suzanne Laban, Stalin's Russia convinced him to abandon communism. Subsequently, he wrote many books critical of communism in Calcutta, and worked for the anti-communist Society for the Defense of Freedom in Asia SDFA. According to Goal, when he wanted to apply for a passport in 1955, he was told that his case was receiving attention from the Prime Minister himself, and his application was not granted. Nehruism and censorship Goal wrote regularly for the Organizer Weekly, whose editor K. R. Mulcani was his friend. In 1961-1962 he used the pseudonym Ikaki solitary while writing the series in defense of comrade Krishna Menon, critical of Indian National Congress leader Jawaharlal Nehru. Although the series was widely read and praised, he was later admonished by a leader of the Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sang RSS for being too focused on Nehru, and the series was discontinued. The collected series was published in December 1963 by Vaidya Gurudatta and an updated version released as Genesis and Growth of Nehruism 30 years later. 
However Gohl's writings about Nehru in The Organizer cost him his job and disillusioned him of the RSS. According to Gohl, he was under surveillance by the Indian government during the 1962 Sino-Indian War. He was not arrested, even though this was according to him demanded by some government leaders, including future Prime Minister I.K. Gujral. In November 1962, he was recruited to participate in a guerrilla war against Communist China, but he refused, saying, that so long as Pandit Nehru was the prime minister of the country, I could be only a traitor to it." During the 1980s, Gohl worked on a series titled Muslim Separatism, Causes and Consequences, but some passages from his articles were censored by the organizer. He discovered that his series was considered too controversial by the RSS leadership who thought that it was alienating Muslims from the party, and Gohl had to stop writing for the organizer after the completion of the series perversion of India's political parlance. K. R. Mulkani, who was the editor for The Organizer for three decades, was sacked because of his support for Goal. Goal also noted that on other occasions that some of his articles, e.g. his article on the Vedapuri Iswaran Temple controversy, were suppressed in the Indian media. <laughs> Publisher and writer Goal founded the publishing house Biblia Impex India in 1963, which published books by authors such as Dharampal, Ram Swaroop, K. D. Sethna and K. R. Mulkani. Sita Ram Goal joined the non-profit publishing house Voice of India in 1982. Voice of India was founded in 1982 by Ram Swaroop, and published works by Harsh Narain, A. K. Chatterjee, K. S. Lal, Konrad Elst, Rajendra Singh, San R. S. Nirala, and Srikant Talajari among others. Early versions of several of Gohl's books were previously published as a series in periodicals like Hinduism Today, Indian Express or The Organizer. Gohl speculates that a series of articles he published in Indian Express in 1989 regarding the destruction of Hindu temples by Muslims may have contributed to the firing of its editor, Arun Shaori, the following year. In August 1990, while releasing two books published by Voice of India, Bharatiya Janda Party leader L. K. Advani chided Goal for using strong language. Goal also worked as a part time secretary for the All India Panchayat Parishad, whose manager was his friend Jayaprakash Narayan. Narayan was impressed by Goal's Hindi book Samyak Sambuddha and said to Goal, If Sanatana Dharma is what you say it is, I am all for it. You can count me as a Sanatanist from today. You can say to whomsoever you please that J.P. has become a sanitanist. Goal was fluent in Hindi, Urdu, Bengali, English and Sanskrit, and read Persian. <laughs> <laughs> Opinions <laughs> On rewriting of history books Gohl claimed that there was a «systematic distortion» of India's history which the Marxist historians of Ali Gur and the JNU had undertaken. In particular, he claims that the history of medieval India and the Islamic invasions is being rewritten. He described it as an «experiment with untruth» and an exercise in suppressio veri suggestio falsi. According to him, the Ministry of Education has extended this experiment to school-level textbooks of history. Goal called it an insidious attempt at thought control and brainwashing, and argued that the NCERT guidelines are recommendations for telling lies to our children, or for not telling to them the truth at all. <laughs> On Indian secularism Goal has criticized Indian secularism, alleging that this concept of secularism is a gross perversion of the concept which arose in the modern West as a revolt against Christianity and which should mean, in the Indian context, a revolt against Islam as well. On media bias Goal claimed that there is a media bias in India, in particular with regard to criticism of Islam or people like Nehru. In 1955 Goal asked one of his friends, who was supportive of Nehru and who had published in many international and national journals, to write an article critical of Nehru's policies. 
but the Indian publications didn't accept his critical article, and he claims that his standing as a scholar in India suffered thereby. Gold described an incident during a seminar on hurdles to secularism. In 1963, which Gol attended, and which was presided over by Jayaprakash Narayan. As Gol tells it, most participants in the seminar criticized only Hindu communalism, but when one Muslim speaker took up the issue of Muslim communalism, he was shouted down by the other Muslims of the seminar and had to stop talking. Topic: <laughs> On Indian nationalist organizations. Gol criticized Hindu nationalist organizations like the RSS. He claimed that with few exceptions they shared the Nehruvian consensus on all important issues, and that the RSS and the BJS stalwarts spent almost all their time and energy in proving that they were not Hindu communalists but honest secularists. He also claimed that RSS members are worried almost only about the reputation of their organization and their leaders, and are rather ignorant to Hindu causes. When a Bharatiya Jana Sangh BJS leader asked him to write a book about the BJS, Gol replied that his book would be pretty critical on the score of their policies. Gol edited the book, Time for Stock Taking, a collection of papers critical of the RSS. According to Belgian writer Konrad Elst, Ram Swaroop and Sita Ram Gol wrote in defense of Hinduism, never of Hindutva. On Christianity Gol was outspoken in his criticism of Christianity. And received some criticism for his anti Christian perspective. In 1995, Gol sent Pat Robertson his book, Jesus Christ, An Artifice for Aggression, and a letter in protest to Robertson's remarks towards the religion of Hinduism. On Islam and Muslims Gol has criticized the history and doctrines of Islam in some of his writings. His works are also cited by critics of Islam like Robert Spencer and Arun Shaori. Despite his criticism of Islam, he said that he is not opposed to an understanding and reconciliation between the two communities. All I want to say is that no significant synthesis or assimilation took place in the past, and history should not be distorted and falsified to serve the political purposes of a Hindu baiting herd. He argues that the Muslims should evaluate the Islamic history and doctrines in terms of rationalism and humanism, without resort to the casuistry marshaled by the mullahs and Sufis, or the apologetics propped up by the Ali Gur and Stalinist schools of historians. Just as the European Christians did centuries earlier with Christianity, he believed that the average Muslim is as good or bad a human being as an average Hindu, and warned. Some people are prone to confuse Islam with its victims, that is, the Muslims, and condemn the latter at the same time as they come to know the crudities of the former. This is a very serious confusion, which should be avoided by all those who believe in building up a broad-based human brotherhood as opposed to narrow, sectarian, self-centered, and chauvinistic nationalism or communalism. Topic. On decline of Buddhism Arun Shaori wrote about Gol. Marxists cite only two other instances of Hindus having destroyed Buddhist temples. These two it turns out yield to completely contrary explanations. Again Marxists have been asked repeatedly to explain the construction they have been circulating, to no avail. Equally important, Sita Ram Gol invited them to cite any Hindu text which orders Hindus to break the places of worship of other religions, as the Bible does, as a pile of Islamic manuals does. He has asked them to name a single person who has been honored by the Hindus because he broke such places, the way Islamic historians and lore have glorified every Muslim ruler and invader who did so. A snooty silence has been the only response. Topic: Literary influences. He wrote and published books in English and Hindi. He also translated George Orwell's 1984, Three Dialogues of Plato, Dennis Kincaid's The Great Rebel about Shivaji, and other books into Hindi. 
Gohl was well read in Western and Eastern literature, and among his most favorite writers or works were Thomas Hardy, Shakespeare's Hamlet, Bankam Chandra Chattopadhyay, Aldous Huxley, Plato, Tagore, the Bhuti Bhushan Bandopadhyay, Vaishnava and Bal poets, the Kathamrita written by Mahendranath Gupta and Thomas Gray's poem, Elegy. Two. His favorite book was the Hindu epic Mahabharata, which he would read in its original language Sanskrit. Sita Ram Gol was influenced by Indian writer and philosopher Ram Swarup. He said that his masters have been Vyasa, Buddha, and Sri Aurobindo, as elucidated by Ram Swarup. He was also influenced by Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Dayananda Sarasvati, and Mahatma Gandhi. Banned books Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Understanding Islam through Hadis In 1983, Gol reprinted Ram Swarup's Understanding Islam through Hadis. The book was a summary of the Sahih Muslim Hadith and consisted of extracts from the Hadiths. In 1987, he again reprinted the book, but the copies of a Hindi translation were seized by the police and Gol was arrested briefly. In due course, some Muslims and the Jamaat e Islami Weekly Radiance claimed that the book was offensive. In 1990, the Hindi translation of the book was banned. In March 1991, the English original was banned as well. The criminal case Against Goal for printing the book was dismissed after some years on 5 May 1997, but the book still remains banned. Indian intellectuals protested against the arrest of Goal. Arun Shaori commented on the criminal case No one has ever refuted him on facts, but many have sought to smear him and his writing. They have thereby transmuted the work from mere scholarship into warning. The forfeiture is exactly the sort of thing which had landed us where we are, where intellectual inquiry is shut out, where our traditions are not examined, and reassessed, and where as a consequence there is no dialogue. It is exactly the sort of thing to which foments reaction. Freedom of expression which is legitimate and constitutionally protected. It the Supreme Court declared last year, cannot be held to ransom by an intolerant group or people. Topic. Hindu view of Christianity and Islam 1993. In 1993 the MP Syed Shahabuddin, who in 1988 asked for the ban on the Satanic Verses, demanded a ban on Ram Swarup's book Hindu view of Christianity and Islam. Gol and Swarup went into hiding because they feared that they could get arrested. The court accepted a bail and the authors came out of hiding. Arun Shaori and K. S. Lal protested against the ban. Topic: <laughs> Colin Maine's The Dead Hand of Islam. In 1986, Gol reprinted Colin Maine's essay The Dead Hand of Islam 3. Some Muslims filed a criminal case against Gol, alleging that it violated sections 153a and 295a of the Indian Penal Code and similar articles of the Indian Customs Act. The judge discharged Gol and referred to the earlier court precedent, 1983 CRLJ 1446. Speaking of the importance of that precedent, the judge in his discussion said, if such a contention is accepted a day will come when that part of history which is unpalatable to a particular religion will have to be kept in cold storage on the pretext that the publication of such history would constitute an offense punishable under Sec. 153a of the Penal Code. The scope of S-153a cannot be enlarged to such an extent with a view to thwart history. Otherwise, the position will be very precarious. A nation will have to forget its own history and in due course the nation will have no history at all. If anybody intends to extinguish the history by prohibiting its publication of the nation on the pretext of taking action under the above sections, his act will have to be treated as malified one. The Calcutta Quran Petition Gol published the Calcutta Quran petition with Chandmal Chopra in 1986. On 31 August 1987, Chopra was arrested by the police and kept in custody until 8 September for publishing the book with Gol. Gol absconded to avoid arrest. 
Topic: <laughs> Hindu temples. What happened to them? There were proposals in November 1990 in Uttar Pradesh to ban Goal's book Hindu Temples, What Happened to Them? <inaudible> Legacy Sita Ram Goal has been described by Konrad Elst as an "...intellectual kshatriya." David Frawley, said about Goal that he was "...modern India's greatest intellectual kshatriya." And one of India's most important thinkers in the post-independence era." According to Frawley, Sitaram followed a strong rationalistic point of view that did not compromise the truth even for politeness' sake. His intellectual rigour is quite unparalleled in Hindu circles. <laughs> Partial bibliography World Conquest in Installments 1952 The China Debate Whom Shall We Believe 1953 Mind Murder in Mao Land 1953 China is Red with Peasant's Blood 1953 Red Brother or Yellow Slave 1953 Communist Party of China A Study in Treason 1953 Conquest of China by Mao Zedong 1954 Nataji and the CPI 1955 CPI conspire for civil war 1955 In defense of comrade Krishna Menon a political biography of Pandit Nehru New Delhi Bharati Sahitya Sadan 1963 Hindu society under siege 1981 revised 1992 ISBN 8185990670 the Story of Islamic Imperialism in India 1982, Second Revised Edition 1994. ISBN 81-85990-23-9 How I Became a Hindu 1982, Enlarged 1993. ISBN 81-85990-05-0-4 Defense of Hindu Society 1983, Revised 1987. ISBN 81-85990-24-7-5 The Emerging National Vision 1983. History of Heroic Hindu Resistance to Early Muslim Invaders 1984, 2001. ISBN 81-85990-18-2 with a review of Ram Gopal's Indian resistance to early Muslim invaders up to 1206 AD. Perversion of India's Political Parlance 1984, ISBN 81-85990-25-5 Papacy, Its Doctrine and History 1986. The Calcutta Quran Petition by Chanmal Chopra and Sita Ram Goel 1986, enlarged 1987 and again 1999. ISBN 81-85990-58-1-6 Sita Ram Goal, in Devendra Swaroop, ed., Politics of Conversion, Dry, Delhi 1986. Muslim Separatism, Causes and Consequences 1987, ISBN 81-85990-26-3 Catholic Ashrams, Adapting and Adopting Hindu Dharma, edited by S. R. Goal, 1988, enlarged 1994 with new subtitle, Sannyasins or Swindlers, ISBN 81-85990-15-8-7 History of Hindu-Christian Encounters, AD 304-1996 enlarged 1996. ISBN 81-85990-35-2 Hindu Temples, What Happened to Them 1990 Vol. 1 ISBN 81-85990-49-2, 1991 Vol. 2 ISBN 81-85990-03-4, enlarged 1993 Genesis and Growth of Nehruism 1993, with a foreword by Philip Spratt, founder of the CPI-8 Preface to Tipu Sultan, Villain or Hero 1993 9. Jesus Christ, An Artifice for Aggression 1994, 10. Time for Stock Taking 1997, Critical of the RSS and BJP Preface to the reprint of Matilda Jocelyn Gage, Woman, Church and State 1997, ca. 1880, Feminist Critique of Christianity 
Vindicated by Time, the Nyoga Committee Report edited by S.R. Goal, 1998, a reprint of the official report on the missionaries' methods of subversion and conversion 1955. Freedom of Expression, Secular Theocracy vs. Liberal Democracy 1998, edited by Sita Ram Goal ISBN 81-85990-55-7-11. Hindi Secularajma Rastradroa ka dusara nama secularism, Rashtradroa ka dusra nam, Secularism, another name for treason, 1985 Samyaka Sambuddha Samyak Sambuddha Translations into Hindi Satyakama Socrates Three Dialogues of Plato Apology Crito and Phaedo Victor Kravchenko I Chose Freedom Thomas Gray's poem Elegy 12 Bankam Chandra Chattopadhyay Ramayana Alashona The God That Failed A Testimony on Communism by Arthur Kosler Andre Guide and others Ram Swaroop's Communism and Peasantry George Orwell's 1984 the Great Rebel by Dennis Kincaid, Shaktiputra Shivaji ISBN 81-85990-40-9 Taslima Nazrin. Laja. Panchanya, Summer 1994 <inaudible> <inaudible> Further reading India's Only Communalist, in commemoration of Sita Ram Goal, edited by Konrad Elst, Voice of India, New Delhi, 2005 ISBN 81-85990-78-6 with contributions by Subhash Kak, David Frawley, Lokesh Chandra, Srikant Talajari, Vishal Agarwal, N.S. Rajaram and others, 13 Elst, Konrad. India's Only Communalist, an introduction to the work of Sita Ram Goal. In Hinduism and Secularism, After Ayodhya. Arvind Sharma ed. Palgrave 2001 ISBN 978-0-333-79406-7. See also Ram Swaroop Konrad Elst Robert Spencer Ibn Warwick Sirja Trifkovich Oriana Falachi Andrew Bostom Swapandasgupta Notes <laughs>